When League of Legends released in 2009, a bundle of 40 different champions came along with it. 14 years down the line, many of those champions were drastically changed whether it being aesthetics, gameplay, or both. With how the game has evolved, I think we owe a revisit to what started it all. Hello JV1, I'm Snowball, and today I'm going to be comparing the OG 40 champions on release to what they're like now. Briefly covering the original kits, visual design, and splash arts, I bet many of the people who started playing League during the modern times will be surprised as to what the game used to be like. I'm going to be starting off the video with Singed, since if you didn't know already, he was actually the first champion to ever be designed. Ironically though, he hasn't really changed much, both visually and gameplay wise. All of his abilities are the same, however now his ult does make his poison trail apply grievous wounds, which I thought was a nice touch. Also his W used to not root if you flip someone into it. It is interesting seeing how a champion's kit from 2009 can stand the test of time. We can mirror Sins with Warwick since, well, if you saw the scene in Arcane, you know what I'm talking about. Warwick is a pretty impressive glow up since his debut. His kit now compared to what it used to be is pretty similar. His old Q is the same except he wouldn't dash through you or follow mobility. His W is basically his old E but better overall. And his ult is the same except, get this, it used to be point and click. With his lick being similar but just updated with some extra lore, I think Warwick's rework is definitely top 3 all time. Speaking of things that used to be point and click, Vagar's combo used to be so easy. His old cage was instant, meaning no animation to help you react. And his Q was point and click. If you thought being one shot by Vagar was lame today, imagine back then. Soraka used to be pretty disgusting on paper. Her ult E was a point and click ability. If you use it on an ally, you give them mana, but using it on an enemy would silence them. Remember, point and click. She could also give herself mana. Her ult heal could not only heal allies, but herself and minions too. She also didn't lose any HP for using it. Her ult now is pretty much the same, and her ult Q is a similar idea, but auto-targeted multiple enemies around her, and didn't heal her since she didn't need it. Her splash art also looked like this. Another champion that was really gross was Twisted Fate. You know his super broken annoying ultimate? The one that lets you teleport anywhere on the map? That used to be one of his basic abilities. Granted, his kit overall was pretty lackluster, and a lot of his power was in his old E, which was the teleport. The way they changed him down the line was correct in my opinion, putting his superpower into his ult key and redistributing some strength throughout his basic kit. I covered this in my last video, but Sivir is the exact same as she used to be. I mean, she doesn't look like this anymore, but yeah, all around nothing different. There's actually a good amount of characters that are pretty much the same, but for the most part, have something in their kit that was tuned in a way to be more viable in modern League of Legends. Tryndamere is also the exact same. Just like Sivir, he was touched up graphics wise, but nothing about his kit is different at all in terms of ability definition. I think his ear range was increased over the years though. However, Ash is a bit different. This is a great example of Riot preserving a champion's kit. Sometimes it just needs a bit of tuning, but the base idea of the design is solid. Ash's old Q is basically a toggle, where if you used it, each of your auto attacks would slow the enemy, as well as use mana per auto. Her W was the same, however it would only slow if your Q is active. Her E was also pretty much the same, but in modern days it can stack itself up for up to 2 uses. Since we're on the topic of failure champions, let's just cover the rest right now. Anivia had the same abilities but was definitely way more broken. Her old Q would slow enemies that pass through, still stunning on impact. As you know already, her E does bonus damage on targets she's hit with her Q stun, but back then her E did bonus damage if prior, you hit an enemy with any ability, meaning that you could just plop your massive ult on someone and just get massive burst damage on them. It was pretty rewarding for something that's extremely easy to do. Another insane thing she was allowed to do was go into her egg passive, use Zhonya's and then TP away. Finishing the Feljord, Nunu is what remains. Nunu is actually my main champ and I also mained him before his rework. When he got reworked, they pretty much kept the identity of the champion's design and kit, but also modernized it. His old passive was that every 5th auto, his next ability would cost 0 mana. His old Q is the same, except today it can also hit enemy champions, when back then it could only hit minions and monsters. W used to be Blood Boil, where he could point and click on a teammate and both he and them would receive increased movement speed, ability power, and attack speed. The old E was him tossing a snowball, which was point and click, applying a slow, and if you built AP, dealing massive damage. His ult was the same, but he didn't gain any shield upon use. I really like the way they reworked him. They found a way to update him for the modern game, but keeping pretty much every aspect of his kit somehow and making it better, including what it looked like. Gross. 
Old Teemo is pretty similar to the modern Teemo, but he has had quality of life updates. His old passive was the same stealth as today, except now he can move around while remaining invisible as long as he's in a bush. The other change is that he can bounce his mushrooms on top of ones that were already placed, giving him more creative utility. At the time, he was the most hated champion no question. Now of course, we have a bunch of characters you'd probably delete from the game before even thinking about Teemo. For the next section of the video, I want to focus on champions whose kit was barely touched. Really quick though, I'd appreciate if you click the subscribe button, it helps me a ton, thanks a lot. Malphite is the exact same, except his splash art used to look like this. I'd rather go against the old one. Master Yi was almost the same, except his old passive used to increase his dodge chance. Dodge chance is a mechanic that no longer exists in League. What it did was allow a percentage chance to every champion to completely ignore the damage or effects of an auto attack. Annie is also the exact same except her ability icons and splash art were given a makeover. Amumu is basically no different from himself now except his Q can have two charges now. Back in the day it was just one. This change actually made him an extremely broken support for a long time and overall has made him more viable. It's crazy that that's all it took. Nothing's really changed with Nasus at all. Karthus was the exact same character, but received complete visual update pretty early on. I think it was because of some sort of Chinese censorship that not being able to portray skeletons or something, he used to look like this, which, you know, I personally like the upgrade. Another champion who's pretty much still the same is Morgana. I'm actually surprised as to how many champions are the same as when they were released. Usually it's for the right reasons, but I, along with many high level players, believe Morgana is long overdue for a rework. Jax's old E used to grant him dodge chance, which meant he could dodge turret shots with it. Other than that, he remained unchanged up until 2022, where he received some minor changes in terms of his abilities and updated icons. Basically, just some quality of life updates, and a meme fishing passive earning him 1 gold every so often while standing in the river. Blitzcrank was the exact same, except his hook was point and click. I'm being serious, but yeah, besides that, his W slows him now after a couple seconds. Janna was the same, except her splash art may be the biggest upgrade ever considering the similarities but improvement in every way. I don't think you guys are ready for this. On release, Twitch's stealth at max rank would last 60 whole seconds. An entire minute. How disgusting, dude. He also looked like this. Yikes. Ramus recently got a mini rework, where now his ultimate is different and doesn't slow down his move speed by using his W. His ultimate used to be called Tremors, where it would just do AoE damage around him to enemies including turrets for a duration. Up until that point, he never changed. There's not much different about Shaco today than when he was released. His boxes could stack right on top of each other, and his ultimate clone exploded with knives everywhere instead of exploding into three boxes. Also, he used to look like this absolute nightmare fuel. From what I understand, Dr. Mundo was essentially the same character up until 2021 when he got reworked. Finally, we have Cho'Gath, who is still the same character. Now we can move on to the rest of the OG champions, who've actually had substantial changes done to them over the years. I can't find the full amount of information on what Tristana's Q used to do, so I'm not exactly sure how different she is. I know her E is different. It used to apply Grievous Wounds on her autos, and she killed an enemy while it was active, it would do an AoE burst around them. Zillion used to be pretty similar to the modern version, but his old passive essentially would make his entire team always be ahead in XP permanently. 8% bonus XP to be exact. His Q was reworked as well, it used to be the point and click, however you wouldn't stun enemies when you stacked two different bombs on top of them. This change made him more skill expressive and honestly less annoying, while the change to his passive made him not insanely disgusting broken. While making this video, I've realized something. Jungle champion reworks are absolutely goaded. Warwick, Nunu, and now Fiddlesticks. They turn this goofy character into a horrifying monster and I love it. Old Fiddlesticks' Q is the same as today. His W however was slightly worse, only being able to hit a single target at a time. His old E was a silence, however it was a crow that would bounce between enemies instead of a slash hitbox. His old ult was the same, but again a bit worse, since it didn't instantly fear the enemies he hit. Fun fact though, he's actually had 4 different splash arts. Corky back in the day was pretty much the same champion we have today, except there was no package meaning there was no enhanced W. Also, because of the fact that he didn't have his package passive, his passive was different. Basically, his auto attacks just did 2 damage against enemies. When it comes to Ryze, there was pretty much 3 different versions of him across the lifespan of League. His original release and the second version seemed pretty similar though. 
One thing was for certain, all of his abilities were point and click. His Q is the damage spell, his W was a root, and his E was a spell that would bounce between enemies. And his ult just enhanced the rest of his spells. Old Heimerdinger honestly feels pretty underwhelming compared to modern Heimerdinger. His turrets were the same, but his W only fired 3 rockets and you couldn't focus them in or spread them out at will. They just auto-targeted random enemy units. His E still stunned the targets if you hit them perfectly, but it would also blind them? What? Alistar hasn't changed a lot over the years besides his E and his passive. Riot basically switched both of their places in a sense. His old E was an instant AoE heal and his old passive was that after he used an ability, he'd deal AoE damage for a bit. Now his passive is the heal and his E is the AoE damage but with a stun. Season 1 Kale is basically less of a polished champion than she is now. Her Q was a big red orb that slowed, however it was a point and click. Her ult was the same, but it didn't require a charge up animation and also did not have swords raining down dealing damage. Katarina was very similar to modern Katarina but with fewer tools. She did not have the dagger that she'd leave on the floor from her Q or W. Her W was the spin attack that the current one triggers once she walks on top of her passive blade, and her E used to be able to blink towards. Old Tarek was kind of a meme, but I don't really remember why. Both versions are similar to each other in the sense that they're both tanky enchanters. Tarek's old passive is the same. His old Q was still a heal but is now empowered by his passive. His old W was the same as the modern one, giving armor to nearby allies but did not provide shields. Instead of his E being a skill shot that binds to allies, hitting an enemy in a line that stuns, it was just a point and click that stunned one enemy. His ult was nothing like the one we have now. He would smash the ground with his hammer, buffing himself and his allies with more damage. The original Kassadin was pretty broken. His old passive gave him reduced damage against abilities and attack speed. His old Q silenced enemies, not just interrupted channels, but completely silenced them. His current W restores mana, but his old one used to steal mana from his enemies, and he'd gain double the amount of mana back from what he stole. Little thieving bastard. Remember when I brought up Twitch's old stealth lasting 60 seconds? Well, Season 1 Evelyn's lasted that long too. You'd only ever see her if she decided to enter combat or use abilities. Her old Q was similar but didn't shoot out multiple strikes. Her W was what would activate her stealth and then her next attack would stun enemies. This was so broken and they changed it to a slow. Evelyn's ult was basically just a big buff. Gangplank's damage pretty much solely came from his Q. His old W was the same and his old E just gave him more damage. He didn't have barrels. Also, Gangplank's old ultimate was basically the same but the cannons actually fired randomly, so the chances of you not taking a lot of damage was solid. For a super in-depth look into Gangplank's history, you should check out Varz's video. He does a great job of explaining it. I saved one of the most iconic for last. Old Scion was definitely something. Just look at him. He does have some callbacks to his original kit in the modern version. For example, his W was still a shield that he could detonate and his E would infinitely stack HP if he executed enemies with it active. But that's pretty much it. His Q was a point and click stun, and he did most of his damage by auto attacking, since his E gave him bonus attack damage, and his ult gave him 50% bonus attack speed, bonus life steal, and healed his allies based on the damage from his auto attacks for 20 whole seconds. Thanks so much for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, and again, make sure to subscribe to keep up with my latest content. See you next time.